and welcome everyone to another tarot reading. So this is officially the start of my weekly tarot readings on my Instagram. I'm also going to save these and upload these to YouTube if you prefer to watch there. Um, but these are going to be slightly longer form. It'll be kind of a general reading and then a relation to self-worth. So let's just get into what the collective reading is for everyone today. All right. Ooh. Okay. Wow. All right. This is a fantastic reading. So basically what we have, I don't know if this really counts as a spread, but I essentially have been drawing in this way where I have three cards in front of me. They kind of have an interrelated message. And then the energy that that card is governed by is this card at the top. And so I don't know, I didn't really find this anywhere. I just kind of came up with it, but it's been making sense to me intuitively. And so I've just been going with it. And, um, the cards that we pulled are the three of swords the Queen of Wands, the uh, Chariot card, and then we also have the Hanged Man. So um, basically with the Three of Swords, what's really interesting actually about all of uh, this reading is that we pretty much have all swords and wand cards. So what that means is that this is really about moving quickly. This is more of like an urgent message, right? And the first three of swords is really talking about moving past sorrow, breaking apart your sense of identity that's rooted in your past struggles. So because we've been through difficult things in our past, you know, that becomes how we project onto the future. So, you know, if we had a difficult relationship with our parents or our family, sometimes we develop trust issues about everyone and we just are afraid to let anyone in. Things like that can essentially become embedded in your identity. And it's really kind of speaking to letting those go and identifying what parts of you were maybe formed out of hurt or pain or trauma that no longer serve you. So we also have the Queen of Wands and she really speaks to strength, um, to confidence, to being at one with nature and being very connected spiritually and kind of finding power in that. Um, again, transforming that sense of spiritual or sensitive being weak into that vision of it being strong and actually something that you are able to harness and use to help you grow and to motivate you. And so while you're, you know, moving past your sorrow and leaving all of that behind, how can you actually define and create the identity that you want to be? So this is almost calling into question, like, what is your identity? What do you want to see yourself as? And how can you cultivate life and approach life from that perspective? Um, and Oddly enough, we also have the chariot card, which really speaks to taking the reins back and taking control back of your life. And it's actually saying that, you know, you're doing a pretty good job of that. You have your hand in a lot of different buckets. You're able to balance a good amount of um, what you have going on in your life, even if it does feel chaotic. So just feel confident in that control that you have over your situation, over your circumstances. And also it is saying that if you're looking to take back some of that control, then how can you maybe unburden yourself by delegating or by relying on your community or by asking for help or support in a certain way? Can you ask someone in your family to make you a meal one day? Or can you, you know, train yourself to meal prep so that it's not something that you have to do every single uh, day? You know, little things like that. How can you take back control? How can you feel more at control with you know, your time and your energy. And what's interesting is that this is all kind of governed by the hanged man. So the hanged man is really about trust. It sounds like a scary card, but it's about trusting yourself and trusting your environment and trusting the universe to have your back essentially, right? So as we're on this journey of leaving our painful identities behind us and getting back into, you know, the seat of our lives, allowing ourselves to dream of the identity and of the personality that we want to have and obviously this isn't about you know changing fixed parts of yourself but as someone that personally has had a life of a lot of pain a lot of depression a lot of heartache it's hard for myself to just embrace joy and so that's what this is saying like how can you 
choose joy and choose to see yourself like that? How can you choose to, you know, trust other people? And it's not about being naive or about forgetting lessons that you've learned that have been helpful and useful to you, but just how can you open up your life to be more beautiful, to be more abundant? And a lot of that comes from starting with a place of trust. You have to trust yourself. First of all, you also have to trust your environment or that you're at least in the right place um, that you need to be in order to grow. So um, that's a beautiful message and just kind of the general message. But how does this relate to self-worth, right? So with, you know, our, our past identities and with the things that have happened to us, so much of that is because we eventually feel like we deserve it, especially if those things happen when we're young. We don't know any better. And sometimes we don't even know that people ha live differently until we see it or until we hear of it. And so you, from such a young age, are convinced that all the behaviors and all the environments around you are normal. And as you get older, you get to decide what normal is. You get to decide what you deserve, what you want to be surrounded by, how much peace, how much joy, how much energy you want in your life. And that's such a beautiful thing. So going back to the chariot card, you know, how can you take the reins of what you want in life? How can you decide what you want? And then the work behind that is actually letting yourself feel that you deserve those things. You, you know, so step one is deciding what you want, but step two, which is a much more convoluted long path is, you know, how do I get from where I am to there? And a lot of that, you know, usually involves self-sabotage. It involves uncovering all of the ideas that have been holding you back, all of the lies that you have told yourself or all of the ways that other people have convinced you of your weakness or your lack of power or control. So it's really about feeling like you are worthy enough and deserving enough to have the life that you want and to approach your life with a sense of healthy control you know you are able to decide if you want to move you're able to decide if you want something new in your life and a lot of these things take planning they take money they take savings but if you feel like you have that control that's going to completely change how you see life how you approach it because you're not having this weighed down feeling of being stuck in your circumstances and this kind of gross feeling of just feeling bogged down by everything around you and feeling like you have no choice and no options. So um, this is really about taking all of that back and acknowledging that while you are trying to control, you can't control without trust, you know? Um, control isn't about dictating how everything happens to you. It's not about, you know, making things happen for other people. It's not at all about controlling other people. It's about saying, this is what I want. This is what I choose to put my intentions into. This is what I choose to focus on in my life and cultivate more of. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to trust myself through the hard times. I'm going to have to trust my community and my support system when I'm feeling down. I'm going to have to trust the universe when it seems like nothing's going my way. Um, so yeah, wow, this is a beautiful message. Um, what do you think about this? Does it resonate with you? Let me know in the comments below. And also if you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one reading or you want to learn more about your personal growth plan, if you want to figure out what you should be focusing on and what you need to work on in your own self-worth journey, then don't forget to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. All of the details where you can learn more and sign up will be down below. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching and happy healing.